Hello and welcome to another classic episode of This Week in Comics. I'm your host Pete here in Comic Collections in Banbury, Oxfordshire's longest running comic store. It's week 25 and for that week we are going to be running down the best and top comics coming out this week. We will start with the biggest comic coming out this week, not just because it's so exciting, because it is in fact bigger than the other comics. It's Superman Year One by Frank Miller and John Romita Jr. You know who Frank Miller is. He's wrote, wrote, written classics such as Dark Knight Returns, and now he's having a go at writing Superman. It is as it sounds, Year One. It's the first year of Superman being Superman with art by the always excellent John Romita Jr. You've seen his work on Spider-Man. He's even done Superman stuff in the past, in the past few years. But very exciting stuff. All-Star team, part of DC's Black Label. Um, so it's going to be a bit darker, a bit more adult than the Superman you're used to. But very exciting stuff. Big, big creative team. Lovely uh, normal cover and a variant cover by Frank Miller himself. So if you're into Superman, if you're into Frank Miller, if you're into The Dark Knight Returns and you've always wondered you wanted more of Superman from Frank Miller, this is your place. And now, a new comic from IDW. It's the first time that IDW have printed this character, but he has been in comics for decades. It's a Sagi Yojimbo, issue one of a three-issue miniseries by the man who created him, Stan Sakai. Not only have we got the lovely normal cover, we've got a load of variants as well. One in 10, one in 25, and one in 50s. So there you go, there's some lovely variants, plenty of Zagi Yojimbo for your buck. Um, if you've never read him before, you may, like me, have found him because he was an action figure in the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles line. That's how I first saw him and I liked him then and I like him now. New issue one, lovely stuff, like I say, by Stan Sakai. He's done all the Zagi Yojimbo stuff dating back to the very start. So if you like your samurai rabbits, can't go wrong with a bit of a Zagi. On last week's show, I asked for your recommendations, and Daniel did just that. He's thoroughly been enjoying The Age of X from X-Men, and two final parts of the miniseries are out this week. We've got Next, Men, Next Gen sorry, issue 5 and The Amazing Nightcrawler issue 5. So this was kind of like The Age of Apocalypse, which happened in the X-Men books in the mid to late 90s. Well, this is kind of the reverse of that, where rather than bad things happening to the X-Men, good things have been happening. I've heard very good things about these Age of uh, X-Man books. So if you've been checking all these out, if you've been buying them all, they are all coming to an end, but that doesn't mean it's the end of the X-Men. The X-Men have got exciting things ahead. Jonathan Hickman is jumping on board to write a couple of X-Books. So going forward, the X-Men are going to be brought back to prominence. And really, they haven't been as prominent as they could have been since the 90s. So hopefully Hickman can bring them back where they belong. They're back in uh, the Marvel family now because Fo uh, Disney sorry, have bought Fox. So we're going to get some X-Men movies from Disney. We're going to get them teaming up or against the Avengers eventually. So yeah, good to see the X-Men back on top. Jonathan Hickman on the horizon. But if you've been cl collecting the Age of X-Men books, get these before they're gone. This week is somewhat of a quiet week for comics. So if you do, like me, get a lot of different varied books. I've only got two in this week. So it's a perfect time to check out something new. And I know last year a lot of you went and saw Aquaman at the cinemas and you liked it. You liked Jason Momoa's interpretation of Arthur Curry and they brought that interpretation more in line with what's going on in the comics. Aquaman issue 49 is out this week with Mera and a kind of skeletal version of Aquaman. He needs to eat some fish. Um, but yeah, if you like the relationship between Mera and Aquaman, issue 49 looks like a perfect one to jump on board with because there's a lot of Mera and Aquaman interaction in this. So yeah, on a quiet week, best time to try something new. And Aquaman issue 49 should be your pick. So we recently had one of the trade paperbacks of the Sandman relaunch uh, come out just a few weeks ago and the next one is out. It's Lucifer. So if you have been enjoying the Sandman um, relaunch from DC or maybe you haven't been picking up because you like the trades. As we said before, back in the day when Sandman was coming out, a lot of people read it in trade paperback format. They weren't too keen on buying the monthly single issue. So if you are continuing that trend, if you want all your Sandman goodness in trade paperback form, the first volume of Lucifer is out this week. Come and check it out. I know there's a lot of Sandman fans out there, so you should be buying these. So I know a lot of you are collecting War of the Realms at the moment. It's a big Marvel crossover spanning all manner of different titles, and the Road to War of the Realms is collected 
in this handy volume. It's Thor, The Road to War of the Realms. This is volume two of the current Thor series, collects issues seven to 11. Uh, so yeah, if you are collecting War of the Realms, and maybe you missed this because it's just a lead up, it's all here in a handy tray paperback collected form for you. It's by Jason Aaron. He's got a new Thor book on the horizon, King Thor. Um, so it looks like he is leaving the main Thor book, but he's going on to King Thor. So if you like all things from the God of Thunder, check it. Doomsday Clock has been chugging along at a pretty slow space, but it is a very good book and I know you're all reading it and a few of you might have missed out on the button. It's one of what, kind of what led up to Doomsday Clock. This is where Batman finds the button in his Batcave, teams up with Barry Allen to find out what the heck is going on. Um, it had lovely lenticular covers when it kept, first came out in trade paperback back form. It had the lovely hardcover with also a lenticular cover, but if you're not into fancy stuff, if you just like your regular trade paperbacks, the button has been collected just for you. It collects Batman issue 21 and 22 and the same issues of The Flash. So if you've been enjoying Doomsday Clock, if you want a bit more of that while you wait for issue 11 to finally hit the stand, the button isn't a bad place to go. Now you can't see this from the angle you're sitting at, but the shop at the moment is in a little bit of disarray and that is because we are busy sorting through all the back issues that we've got in the shop and you mark my words, there are a fair few of them. So maybe when you come into the shop, you might notice a little bit of disarray and you might not be able to get to where you want to get, but do ask everyone behind the counter because they will be able to get the comics you want. But while this is going on, as a little bit of a sorry and a little bit of a thank you for your patience, anyone who comes in and purchases some stuff from us while stocks last will get these four comics absolutely free. So you get a Star Wars Darth Vader comic, a Civil War II comic, the Harbinger Renegades, that looks a good one. And the Unworthy Thor, issue one. And if you get a bit thirsty reading all these freebies, you're also gonna get a lovely GeekCon mug. So yeah, come in, sorry for the mess if you do see it. Collect your comics and while stocks last, you will get all these freebies as a little thank you and a little sorry from the good guys at Comic Connections. <laughs> So that brings us to the end of another episode of This Week in Comics. As I said, bit of a slow uh, week this week. Not many big new releases other than uh, Zagia Jimbo and Superman Year One out. But as I said earlier, plenty of time for you to check some new stuff. If your orders aren't that big this week, look on the shelf. We've got plenty of new stuff and exciting things that you should be reading. Uh, pop into Comic Connections here in Banbury. Get any comics on a standing order with us. Not only do you save 20% off cover price, you get in reserve behind the counter so you don't miss an issue. Can't say better than that. If you're not local to Banbury, go to wherever your local comic store is, check it out, support it. You'll have a good time. I'll see you next week with another episode of This Week in Comics. I'm going that way.